You know, the weight shift or the pivot is sometimes referred to when it's done strongly and it's done correctly, it's sometimes referred to as posting up the lead hip. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little more in depth about what it means to post the lead hip, why we do it, and how it's gonna give us a lot more power in our golf swing. So, hey, don't go away. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter down the fairway. So if you're on a similar journey and you'd like to get a few more yards off the tee, maybe that you've lost somewhere, or you'd like to maybe hit a couple fairways, just be more solid from tee to green, then I invite you to join us, hit the subscribe button, like this video at the end if you liked it, and leave a comment down below. So Hall of Fame golfer Billy Casper, you've probably heard that name before, incredible swing. He's in my all-time top 10 and he used to describe the pivot as a shift hyphen turn it was a shift turn to him and so the shift and the turn when it's done correctly and when it's done in sequence is often known as posting the lead hip so let's get into what creates that and why we do it okay so i think we can simply break down this action of the left hip as simply one where we're going to drive the left hip about six to eight inches not quite target word which we could consider let's say if i'm looking out to the ball and that's 12 o'clock that would make the target nine o'clock if you can follow that um, i'm going to lay this five iron down pointing to eight o'clock here so it's about 30 degrees to the left i think a really outstanding simple way to phrase this is that we're going to drive the lead hip this way about six to eight inches from where it is in the setup of the swing so mr video editor man would you please put a little posted up line here to my left and we're going to take a look at um, where we have to go from the setup so here i'm going to make a setup Okay, so I'm set up here, and you can see that this line to my, to my left is six to eight inches outside my current left hip position. So now when I go into the backswing this way, this left hip is actually going to be orbiting kind of down and around my right hip, and it, it's actually going to move further away and wind around and move further uh, away from that posted up line that we've got drawn here and you can see that the gap has grown well this is a good thing because this enables us to kind of get a running start from where we started from and we've got more uh, momentum we can gain by getting down this line a little further so if we can take the left hip once we've reached the top of the swing and we can just simply take this hip and drive it about six to eight inches down this eight o'clock line out in front of the arms and out in front of impact so we wouldn't want to have the arms starting down first we're trying to post the hip in preparation for the hit this way so that's the first thing to move it really unwinds our torso and we're braced for the really big hit at the bottom now it's really crucial that we keep the left hip moving down the eight o'clock line which will actually really be helpful in turning this move into a shift turn, as Billy Casper put it. If we were to go instead, let's say to nine o'clock with the left hip this way, you see it hasn't stimulated the turn of my chest or hips very much. And even worse, if I were to take my left hip and push it out to 10 o'clock this way, Whoa, see now I'm off balance over my toes. My body is closed. It's not turning open very much. Um, this is sometimes what people call a slide. They'll mistakenly <laughs> call it a slide because they'll say, hey, you don't want to move your hips laterally at all. And that's just not true. Just about every good player moves their hips targetward several inches. However, they're just doing it in such a way on this eight o'clock line where it's gonna turn everything open as well. So if we were to have that, you still, we have this line here, and don't worry, you're gonna see this from some other angles in a minute, but I'm trying to just 
drive this left hip. You can see now that my hip is right on this uh, line on the screen that I've put. And I'm braced to hit a big hit, but also hit it very straight too. All right, with the help of my favorite folding chair here, let's talk about some of the other anatomical motions that need to go together with the left hip down the eight o'clock line uh, technique. Okay, with the help of my favorite folding chair here, let me uh, talk about one more concept that's super critical to getting the left hip posted correctly. Let's take a, a backswing. It's just arm here again. Now at the moment, my right butt cheek is touching the chair. Well, my left butt cheek has kind of orbited off the wall down and around the posted right. Now, if I were to shift my left hip down the eight o'clock line successfully, you're gonna see what's gonna happen here is right here, I'll end up in this squat look like a Nicholas or any power hitter. As I'm interchanging the two knees, my butt cheeks are back against the chair again, and I'm actually going to lift the chair off the ground about an inch this way. You can see the legs of the chair are off the ground slightly as a result of my left hip pushing down the eight o'clock line, which is actually intersecting the left edge of the chair here. Now let's take a look at some of the other anatomical actions that come along with this hip action. So again, if we take it back to about here for a second, you see I've got my left knee kind of flexed in towards the middle of the stance at the top of the swing. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, at the knee, I'm going to draw that knee back into extension. And this knee will be fully extended when the club gets about 30 inches past the ball. It's going to be simultaneous with the straightening of my right elbow. So the right knee, the left knee and the right elbow are gonna both end up being perfectly straight at the same point. Now, if you've done all these things correctly, you're going to get a very specific foot pressure when you've posted the hip. And that is, you're going to, now see, I've unweighted the foot at the top of the swing. That's the state that I've got it in. I've rolled it in, lifted the heel off the ground. Now, I'm gonna set this, the heel back down or almost stomp it back down again with some force. Start to post up. And as my hips or my pelvis starts to swing over on top of that left foot, you're seeing that I'm getting to the outside my weight is not on the inside of that foot, but it's moving to the outside so much that you can see my shoe starting to roll just a bit. You can also see that the toe of my shoe is a little bit off the ground. This is because the majority of my weight or the center of my weight is more in the heel. And that is not true if you were to shift or try to post up down a nine o'clock line or even worse, a 10 o'clock line. Now I'm over my toes here, ready to fall over. So uh, every good player you're watching on TV this week is all shifting their weight into the outside of the left heel as they're going through the hit, going through the impact zone. And that's really one where we wanna get to. Now, I think that's just gonna be a result of moving the hip and drawing in the knee However, you can use this almost as a mnemonic device, or you can use this as a trigger and just say, I'm gonna to get to this part of my foot, and you might be able to reverse engineer the hip and the knee actions just by focusing in on the correct foot action. All right, let's take a look at all these motions again from my favorite angle, the, instead of the down the line, you could call this up the line or shooting back towards the golfer away from the target. Let's again take a look at that pivot action, if I'm coming at you. Now you can see from that angle, you can see so much better how my left hip has orbited, swung down and around the right knee and hip. And now as I put it back again, you see the club on the ground, I'm gonna take my left hip and I'm just gonna start driving it in that direction until I've arrived on the outside of my heel. And you can see how open my hips and chest have gotten because of the direction that I've pushed this hip in. And now I'm all set to hit it long and straight. Let me see if I can give that a try.
So you can see from the slow-mo uh, treatment in that swing that I certainly returned the left butt cheek back to the wall and really hugged it all the way down, putting more pressure on it than where I started and getting that hip outside the original starting line at setup by about six to eight inches. Almost, you see, half of my pelvis. So it's like I'm taking my center of mass, which is right here just below my belly button, and I'm positioning it on top of the left foot or the left heel while I keep my head back uh, between my feet, giving me the correct tilt to operate on as I turn through the hit. All right, so I'm going to drive the left hip down the 8 o'clock line and slightly lift up the chair. All right, now let's take a look at a drive from the front view where you're going to be able to clearly, more clearly see the gap between the left hip starting position and the posted position that I've got to get to. And we'll have a, a line superimposed on the screen again. You'll be able to see how I close the gap, post up the hip. Now looking back at the replay in slow motion, you could see that I was easily able to close the gap co compared to where I was at, at setup, that I had a good six to eight inch bump uh, laterally or straight, but not at the target directly as we saw in the other uh, angle, that I, my left hip is definitely moving around to the left to the eight o'clock line and it's getting out in front early. So you're checking out that video in slow-mo, watch it a few times over and over again, you'll see that I get to that line, that posted up line, long before the club reaches the ball. And what that's doing for me, it's providing a brace to hit against. As I drive body weight, much more body weight, much more force than my actual body weight, I'm driving down into like trying to push a hole in the ground down through my left heel like this, the, the more braced I can get, the more I'm going to turn faster and the more I'm going to be able to whip the club while staying in balance. So hey, I hope I was able to give you a little bit more clarity and insight into what it means if you ever hear this term again of posting up or posting up the lead hip. Okay, now let me give you a bonus tip that I hopefully is going to help you double the power of your post-up move and really give you a lot of additional power and club head speed get the ball further down the fairway. We'll put the lines up again on the screen. You'll be able to see it set up that I'm six or eight inches short of the line to get to. Now what would happen if I could increase in the backswing like this? and actually do the reverse and post up my right hip the same way I'm going to be posting up my left hip in the downswing. Well, all of a sudden, I'm like a foot off of this line to get to, and now I can really get running at it that way. Claw myself over using the big muscles of the inside of the thigh, the muscles in the glutes on the right-hand side. Watch this again. I'm increasing the gap and crashing into it coming through. So now I'm going to make a swing for you. We're going to take a look at it in slow mo and you're going to see how I will actually, I'll start at six, seven, eight inches away, but I'm, my left hip is actually going to end up over a foot away from the line to get to at the top of the swing. So looking back at that slow-mo again, you could see how I actually made 
Look kind of subtle because I'm kind of blending it in with the rest of the backswing movements. But I actually made a posting up move and this line running vertically down my right hip at address, I actually broke through it. And I moved towards an imaginary line six inches off my right hip. The same way Phil Mickelson or Bubba Watson would move into their right hip on their down swings. The foot action's the same, the knee action's the same. I'm just taking everything that I'm doing going left and I'm winding it going back. See that big gap now that I can run at? Get a lot more momentum and acceleration of that pivot, opening up my turn even faster, making my hands even faster. And I think when you practice this a little bit in detail, get the details right, I think it's really gonna add a big boost of power to your golf swing and give you more accuracy as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California for giving us day after day of beautiful scenery. And hey, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.